think that's a big part of our success. Yeah. I think it's swept under the carpet. And it's not that we're nitpicking. Do you know what I mean? It's Right. It's not little, little. Yeah, lots of little things. Hello, this is Maya Diamond with Rewire Your Attachment Style. And today I'm going to be sharing with you this interview with Candice and Henry, who've been together for 37 years and they're old family friend, friends of mine from Santa Barbara. And the reason that I'm going to be sharing these couple interviews with you is one of my intentions for this podcast is for you to have some role models for healthy, secure couples. Because as I see in my work as a dating and relationship coach is so many of my clients, I notice, don't have the role models for secure, healthy, thriving, lasting couples in their lives. And so I want to present these interviews with you for you as a way to share with you these role models. Something, if you're single, something to aspire to and know some, so that you can know what it looks like and what it feels like to be in these healthy, thriving, lasting relationships. And if you're already partnered, I think there's some really juicy practices and relationship wisdom and reminders that will be really helpful for you as well. And some highlights that I would love for you to track as you're listening is to track Henry, who we found out in the interview is secure, but it's also clear from the way that he behaves in the relationship that he is securely attached because of his childhood background, because of his beliefs about love and relationship, because of his desires around love and relationship. And so I encourage you to just notice Henry in, and track that. Um, as you're listening, because that will allow you to learn more about what secure attachment looks like and feels like. And then also, I encourage you to notice Candice and the way that this relationship really helped her to become more secure by the way that Henry treated her and the love and the trust that they have, as well as the work that she did to allow herself to receive this love and this relationship. And another highlight of this episode is the level of respect and appreciation and gratitude that they have for one another, which are such simple, but profound, profound things that continue to feed and nourish the relationship over this long amount of time. So without further ado, Please enjoy the show, my first couple interview with Candice and Henry, the first of many interviews with couples. Welcome to Rewire Your Attachment Style with Maya Diamond. It's so wonderful to be here today with Candice and Henry. Today, I'm going to be interviewing them about their love life and really getting the raw, real, authentic um, story on what it's like to be in this relationship. So um, I would love to just start with this question of how did the two of you meet? Probably we should just introduce ourselves as well by saying, yes, please. How many years, honey? May of 1983. Wow. May of 1983 was our first date. Wow. So however many years that is. <laughs> You know. But we actually met uh, probably uh, about six months or eight months before that. In a massage class. Oh. In a long massage class. Yeah. We were in a one-year intensive massage class, and hmm. it was a very bonded group. We met weekly to, and then met with the teacher, but met on our own weekly, and um, that's where we met. Wow. 
in the skin, hands to body. <laughs> That's a great introduction. <laughs> and did you, I'm curious, did you know, um, how soon did you know that this was going to be your person? Like, was it right away? Was it, you know, months in? I would love to ask each of you that because I know this is such an individual thing and I love hearing. You know, I would say probably 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. We were in a group for a year. After being in the group for nine months, Candice and I had never worked together. We had worked with everybody else, but never together. Oh. So we went out together for the first time after nine months of being in this group. And um, we did, we massaged each other and then laid in a hammock. And almost immediately, we both started asking each other, gee, I wonder if we're going to be in a relationship. <laughs> yeah, so we've been quiet for quite a while, like maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Part of what this group did is they used an exercise with the people in the group called holding to relaxation. Oh, wow. And so it's also a, an exercise that's used with couples, too. Yeah. And the, especially couples that are just having a hard time connecting in, on any level, sexually or just how to just like relax into each other without any agendas. Yeah. So we would hold until breathing is regulated and you're breathing together and you just feel that your whole body is relaxed and you're usually, and that's done in silence. Mm -hmm. And for like 20, 30 minutes of that, one of us, I can't even remember who, I think it was maybe Henry, said, I wonder if we're going to be in a relationship. Wow. And I said, I was just wondering if my kids are going to accept you and, you know, accept you into our family. Like I was already wow. a single parent with two kids. Yeah. 10 and 13 years old. Yeah, 10 and 13. Wow. So within three months, we were living together. Wow. I know. Amazing. Fast. Really fast. And but so how, can I ask you how old you were, Candice, when you met? We are both 35. 35. Yeah, we're both the same age. Oh, we're wow. A, yeah, yeah. So it just felt so familiar. And I've had a spiritual practice, and Henry's had a spiritual practice. And so mm -hmm. it felt like we were old soul that had we'd been together before like our bodies really our bodies led the way right um, your bodies recognized each other familiar this yeah. is my familiar and yeah. just went you know <laughs> we're both tactile enough that we just went with that yeah beautiful beautiful it was and so i'm curious Actually, yeah, since as you know, you know, most of the women that I work with have had patterns of being attracted to and choosing unavailable partners or toxic relationships or narcissistic or abusive relationships. And I'm curious if either of you had those kind of relationships before you met. Yeah. Or those patterns. So I'll go with that. So yeah, I hooked up with an alcoholic, mm -hmm. you know. We were in our early 20s, and I didn't really realize that's what it was at the time. Right. Um, I grew up in a family where my mother was a daily drinker, but I never saw her drunk, per se. Mm -hmm. um, but every afternoon, she was sort of a socialite, and she played bridge, you know, several times a week, and the co there was cocktail hour with the ladies on the block. So every afternoon, now she also made dinner and she didn't, you know, fall in the soup bowl at dinner or anything. But right. as I later became a therapist and got more educated, I realized she was a functional alcoholic. Yeah. So first husband was an alcoholic and um, I left him mm -hmm. uh, when the kids were um, three and seven. Yeah. So very early on, I, I just said, I, you know, and I begged him. It wasn't that I didn't love him. He was right. an amazing man. He truly was mm -hmm. highly um, man, but yeah. um, I, I could not live with that. So I said, please just go get help. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll wait for six months before yeah. I do, you know, I'm not going to get yeah. in a relationship. But, and, yeah. uh, you know, he never, 
he never chose to get help. And so I moved on. Yes. And then you met Henry about three years later, it sounds like. He, um, let me see. I left Rob in 77 and, seven years and later. yeah, seven years later. Seven years later. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. A couple of boyfriends in, in, you in know. between. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one that was unavailable and one that also had a drug and alcohol problem, which I just said, okay, you know, um, no. can't, can't, do that, can't do that again. Can't do that again. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Uh, so, but definitely I know that, that urge and it was so strong in me and, and I went to therapy and I worked on it and yeah. I also practiced going out and seeing who I was attracted to. And inevitably I would pick the guys that I was attracted to. And then I would just watch them through the evening and they were drinkers. Right. Isn't you know? that amazing? Yeah. yeah. It was it's so conscious and so instinctual in me. Yeah. And so I just really had to very consciously come in and go, no. And then I met Henry. I really had a list of what I was looking for. And, nice. and we talked about that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Fantastic. What about for you? And Henry, yeah, I'm curious if you've had any patterns around, um, yeah, being with partners that were unavailable or, you know, abusive or alcoholic or narcissistic before that were, you know, toxic and really, really painful. No, not at all. No. Yeah. I was married one time before and had been in two other relationships, but not anything like that at all. Yeah. Growing up, what was your parents' relationship, Henry? Like, what, what did you see mirrored to you? Well, uh, Catholics, and really devoted Catholics. I mean, my, and my mother was a convert into the Catholicism in order to marry my dad. And they, they just, uh, they followed the rules of the Catholic Church and had 11 children and uh, just lived their whole life by, through the church, really. Yeah. So it, uh, they, they, you know, it was a loving relationship. Um, uh, my father was more standoffish and uh, authoritarian, and uh, mm -hmm. but it was very warm and at home and there for all of us. So, and I also find it interesting. Uh, none of Henry's siblings have a, a alcohol or drug problem. None of yeah. them. Yeah. 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 So there was some secure, stable something going exactly. on. Even though there were so many, I think it was like a tribe. You know, yeah. They felt secure and safe, and there were very clear rules and guidelines. Yeah. And so, yeah. and your parents were together your whole life, is that correct, Henry? Yes. Yeah. 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 And what did, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yours were too. Got it. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Um, and so I, this is like, to me, the million dollar question, because I think, uh, relationships are, uh, thrive and are healthy based on how we deal with conflict in a relationship, because it's not the good times that make a relationship. It's cause we can all have good times with someone. It's how we deal with like when we ha have conflict. So I'm just curious yeah, like how do you guys deal with conflict? How do you, how do you do conflict? What do you notice that uh, works about the way you do conflict? Well, I'll speak to that a little, and then Henry can chime yeah. in. So Henry is more conflict avo avoidant yeah. in terms of um, not that he won't say what's bothering him, but it's not in a aggressive or kind of angry conflictual way you yeah. know i'm i'm a little more hot you know i run hot and um, so uh, and we had a lot to deal with initially because there were two kids that had a dad who you know didn't show up for them and what they knew was an alcoholic yeah and it was and i had had a couple of boyfriends you know one of them fairly serious and it was like, well, he's just another boyfriend. So we're not, why are we going to attach to him? You know, and they're 10 and 13. Hard right. time to come into a family. Not, they're not toddlers. 
Mm-mm. So, um, but because of Henry's inner strength and, and centeredness in his own being, he didn't try to parent them or get them to love him. He was just there and he just took it. We did a lot of family therapy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to help with the blending process. We did a lot of couples therapy. In the couples therapy, you know, we our therapist advised us every six or eight weeks go away, just the two of us. Nice. Because it was such an intense time of parenting with this age, you know, after school activities and sports and weekends with all that going on. And it was hard to just find couple time. Yeah. We would go away. The other thing that we did is we got a hot tub. And Mm. every night we started going in the hot tub and just having time to just decompress with each other. Beautiful. So the TV wasn't on and the kids were doing homework and it was our private time. Yeah. You know, and we've been doing that for the last 30 years. I love that. We'll do it every night we go in the hot tub we look at the stars we just kind of you know it's a romantic have, time yeah yeah have to have time together and and it's our time to dream and our time to plan and it's our time to talk about you know difficult issues yeah. um, I would say uh, neither one of us ever puts off uh, dealing with things. So we're not people, Mm -hmm. so I think that's a big part of our success. Yeah. Nothing gets swept under the carpet. And it's not that we're nitpicking. Do you know what I mean? It's... Right, it's not little, little, yeah, lots of little things. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, it's just, you know, I notice this when I bring up this or that or... So, you know, we're pretty therapized. Yeah. (laughs) But we yeah. learn how to do each other. And, and I'd say the big issues that we dealt with were parenting styles. Mm-hmm. Like, are you going to support me? in Because I would be the primary disciplinarian, at least for the first few years, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and we had family meetings at home where we did resentments and appreciations. Beautiful. With even you know so that was challenging in the beginning that was very challenging we had a teenager that did not want to participate in that at all (laughs) and he was snarky and I am not talking and (laughs) so then we kind of combined it with family night I know this is getting into families but we're an old no it's great no we have a lot I yeah this is fantastic there's so many single parents who will be listening and who are going to be hearing this conversation that we're having. And so it's great for them to hear all the, the ways that you navigated that challenge and it worked, even though it was so hard with the, yeah, the teenager who's maybe acting out and all that stuff. Us, for three years, he was just horrendous, you know? And uh, so we started having weekly family night and we would either have dinner home and each, each week a different person would plan a family, what the family evening would look like. And it might look like going out for pizza. It might look like staying home and playing board games. Um, frequent a good a pizza and bowling was a big one and if my daughter chose it we knew we were going to be going out for Chinese and I mean you know it just so it became sort of fun but it, the resentments and appreciations was always still a part of it and planning family vacations was a part of it yeah so it wasn't all just you know hey you didn't do your chores you didn't pick up you didn't right you know, yeah, creating those those beautiful times to, to also get away with the whole family. Yeah. And Henry and I, I'd say, the, so I was going to say the biggest issue issues we had to resolve as a couple were the parenting and the kids and yeah. then money and how we were going to use money and what it was going to be used for mm. and how we were going to spend extra money because pretty quickly we – um, we wanted to buy a house, and so we we had a joint savings account, and nice. then we went on from that and buying the house into just joining our money, and we have very similar spending styles, okay. so it wasn't too much of an issue, but 
he his he would have spent all the money on travel. <laughs> And I probably oh, now you're getting into my parts. I would have spent more <laughs> on um, home decor. Right. So go ahead. So yeah, and Henry, actually, I'd love for you to first answer that first question because I still would love even more details around, like for example, now. And Kennedy spoke to this a little bit, but now, yeah, if a conflict comes up, like how do you? What's your process around it? How do you? communicate around it how do you like resource yourself maybe if you are feeling you know emotionally dysregulated if you're feeling overwhelmed if you're feeling angry like how do you also how do you talk to her do you set aside a time or you do you just kind of bring it up in the moment things like that um i you know the way i usually deal with issues is uh if it's bothering me, I won't sleep well. Mm, mm. And I'll get up and write things down. Nice. And uh, make notes. And then take care of that, address that the next day. So I sleep well the next night. Beautiful. One of the one of the main ways that I deal with things. If they're not if they're, if they're not uh, affecting my sleep, it's not as big of an issue. Mm hmm but addressing uh, just our, our money styles, I think that's a huge thing for us. Mm. And in general. And in couples in general, yeah. 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 We're both self-employed, so we're both you know, looking at our monies separately and dealing yeah. with them separately. Yeah. We're, we're both good at it. Yeah, that's great. The other thing is good at, and, and we both we both honor it, is we'll set aside time. Like we know we, we need to talk about, because we don't like it to just linger day after day. So we'll set aside, you know, okay, what's a good time we can talk about this? Mm -hmm. I love that. That's and so simple and powerful. Yeah. yeah. So, and it, yeah, it's as simple as that, you know, right time. Not just bringing things up when you're, you know, out with friends at dinner mm -hmm. or, you know, not embarrassing someone in front of others or you know attacking something in front of others or we just we're, we, we we fight pretty clean that way yeah yeah that's so I'd say, important i'd say we learned a lot about how to fight well mm. and it, you know fighting is almost even too harsh a word for us it's yeah. almost more like yeah. just you know when there's a disagreement yeah it's yeah and those now is few and far between and maybe that's what time and respect and a, and real deep appreciation and i think that's the other thing we uh -huh. used a phrase that we've used through our whole relationship and it and the phrase is um i'm loving you right now mm -hmm. and, and person you know who's receiving that would say well what are you loving about me right now and mm -hmm. it's expressed right in the moment you know oh, I, love I love that play with the grandkids i you know i love the way you cook such good meals i i mean simple stuff yeah really. so this probably evolved out of the resentments and appreciations exercises uh -huh. that we did over the years but it evolved for us into just Sharing the love on a daily basis with appreciation and gratitude. Mm, of course. They say our key. Yes. yes. And I, I yes. love that I, I'm loving you exercise because I think sometimes when we say I love you, like it's like, well, what does that mean? You know, and so, you know, people want a more descriptive version of that. And so by sharing the appreciation it's in the present moment, especially, it's, it's really meaningful. You frequently do it with some show of affection. Yeah. So a lot of affection. Nice. Yeah. Which kind of goes to one of your other questions about how do you keep things. Yes, you know? I, was, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I love, you know, sexuality, sensuality. I also went to massage school, right? It's such a hot topic. And it's, you know, again, typically, right, the two issues that people bring to that couples fight over is money and sex, right? So we can't not talk about sex. And 
um, I'm wondering, and to me, that is such an important piece in a long-term monogamous relationship, is how do we keep that sexual spark alive? How do we keep the attraction, the intimacy, and how do we nurture that? Because it can be something that we don't nurture or we do. So anyways, I'm just so curious if you guys should, can share whatever feels comfortable around how you keep that spark alive and what's been helpful and what works for both of you individually also around it. Well, uh, I think one thing was sexy Sundays. Ooh, <laughs> tell me more. Yeah, yeah, after we got out of the hot and heavy stage, right. You know, all the time. Yeah. Um, which was, you know, like, you know, a, a decade or two down the line. I mean, that, that went on for a long time. But nice. then, we, you know, we got older and, you know, menopause hit and, you know, things. And, and the sexuality becomes, uh, the way I thought about it is the love just keeps deepening. And as it deepens, it gets more expansive. It's sexuality doesn't quite describe it because people all go right to the genitals, you know, very totally. general focus. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, what happens more is there's just this general sensuality that's, I think, what I believe for us anyway. It's very grounded in such a deep appreciation. Mm. So deep and such mm. deep respect. Mm. I regard the other that it becomes well for me the way I described it once to a friend is it's my spiritual practice mm. you know, my goal and my my purpose was you know to learn to love Henry in a very completely open trusting hundred percent unconditional way and in that you know that obviously gets generalized out into the world right but me that is you know that's my spiritual practice it's i'm grounded in compassion and love and that's my value system so i used our relationship to work on that and Beautiful. and that so for me when that love and gratitude and we feel so lucky to have each other and so lucky for the life we've created together we feel so blessed mm. it's such so much gratitude mm. yeah that, that that's kind of i'm not going to say it's replaced sex because that's not true yeah <laughs> I don't like that but this feels so much bigger yeah because this feels like it's buzzing in us and between us all the time Beautiful. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And it sounds like the sex sexuality is an expression of all that deep love and respect and appreciation as well. That's what I mean. And this and the spiritual um, yeah. union that you have. One of many expressions of right. that. Right. Right. That you know, we've expanded that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's less the central focus now. Right. But so what we do do and have uh, affection wise and appreciation wise just feels so nourishing yeah you know, yeah. deeply nourishing for the relationship Beautiful. yeah Beautiful. yeah and so and just because i love structures and practices i'm curious for the sexy sunday was it like or is it like we're gonna spend this time being intimate and we're going to, we have like the whole day, or is it like half a day, or is there any hours around it? Sunday morning. Yeah. You know, no. nice. it's supposed to be sexual, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. It's like date night. So yeah. Sunday exactly. Morning. Exactly. Love it. Because yeah. our day usually entail a meeting and, I mean, a movie or something, and then we come home and we're too tired. <laughs> totally. Totally. Beautiful. Yeah, I think just setting aside that time, whatever day it is, is so, so important. Um, cool. So, um, yeah, anything else, Henry, that you want to add in terms of what helps you keep the spark alive or what's important to you around this? Um, perspective. I, 
same thing, but it's, you know, we were parents, but we also loved being grandparents. Mm. So parenting our grandkids and really having lots of family events mm. and travel together too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're involving as much family as possible to do that with us. Mm. That's so beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah. Another form of nourishment for us, you know, yeah. with family and play with the kids. Since we didn't parent my kids together, you know, right. even though we did their, from their teens on, but yeah. um, but that, but be with those babies and toddlers and do that whole thing as grandparents has just been so fun yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. Really fun, and it's very central in our life. Yeah, you know. And it continues still, even as they still. get older. Yeah, we're still family trips together, and you know, mm -hmm. that's movie so beautiful. Heard around, and and even now, as we speak, our granddaughter and her boyfriend are living in our studio apartment, right? You know, right here. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And so, for the single women listening, um, what would you each say is the number one trait? that you would recommend them look for in a partner? You know, now that you've had this long, healthy, secure relationship where you both feel really nourished and loved and where you can communicate and work through conflicts, like what do you, when you kind of sit inside, what feels like the number one trait that you would recommend? I, I thought a lot. For me, it's, uh, it's trouble. <laughs> No, I mean, it's just a metaphor for, for you know, because, huh. uh, I mean, I, I've traveled a lot in my life, and initially it was an issue for our relationship. I need to check her out and see if she would travel with me. Right. We travel well together. Can you travel well together? Ah. He took me on a trip. It's like, I want to see, you know, if the wheels on this bus are going to work. Yeah. That's true, because it's a lot harder when you travel with someone, I agree, yep. Yeah, and part of that is... Or easier, depending on the relationship, but yeah, it brings up stuff, yeah. You're making so many decisions together every day, every moment of every day, because you're, while well, we were out, out in the world, you know, in Asia, our first trip. Mm. Like, it's a lot to, to uh, and if you can do that together, you know, I think it's easier the rest of it. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. For so me. Wait. Oh, wait. I'm just going to follow up, Henry, which is, so what, what do you think would be the trait in the person? Would it be like flexibility or like? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. And an openness to new experience, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, definitely. You yeah. have to be curious and right. open. Not, yeah. you know. Which is, yeah, those traits are so important. Curious and openness, because then you can explore anything together. And, and travel is central to Henry's life. Mm -hmm. Traveled around the world two different times, you know, for lengthy periods. I mean, this is so important to him that if I could not join in that, I'm sure we would have had a very different well we might not have had a relationship yeah it's so important to him yeah that for me i had to have a partner that was if they hadn't been in therapy then they needed at least be psychologically aware and ability and a, able to self-reflect yeah because if you can't ask somebody to check in and you know what's really going on underneath that you know, I mean, I hear the complaint. I used to call it, you know, when I did therapy, <laughs> um, you know, there are couples arguing about the potato peelings or who's doing the dishes, but that's never what it's really about. Yeah. So, you know, is this person able to drop in and check in and give me a more um, potent answer than what's off the top of their heads? So I self and self logical awareness is really important for me mm -hmm. that's that's brilliant so so brilliant that ability to self-reflect 
Absolutely. Um, so I'm curious, um, did you ever have a point in the relationship where it was insecure, where you maybe either of you was questioning or where, or there was like a really big rupture or anything that you guys kind of got through besides you guys already talked about the challenging times in the beginning with the kids. Was there any other time where it felt insecure? You want to talk about when you moved out for two weeks? <laughs> for two weeks. I, I, so. I couldn't quite remember. I think, he, yeah, yeah. I think he moved out maybe a month. It wasn't long. No. This was about six months into the relationship. Oh, early on, yeah. Yeah, so a long time ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he just wasn't... Well, you should say what it was about. I can't recall, really. <laughs> I mean, I can't recall. Okay, maybe Candice can share. I remember I moved out. I don't remember why. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and, there you go. And it was, um, it was around being uncertain if this, this was the one. Like, is this the relationship that I can commit to 100%? Am I in love with this person enough to really step in here yeah. with these kids and with this woman and really, you know, really commit 100%? And this came up about six months in, and he did move out for, I think it was two or three weeks. And he went to therapy individually. Yeah. And we stayed in dialogue, and we, can, and we saw each other. And... We would be, we were so miserable apart. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good test. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Henry. Ariel, I said, you, need, you do need to figure this out because the kids are now getting attached to you and this is really serious and I'm attached to you and you really do need to decide if you want to be here. So that, that came. Um, even earlier on, for me, um, since I have more insecure attachment, he was still, um, he was very close friends with his ex-girlfriend. Um, she was actually the teacher that taught the massage class <laughs> for a year. Yeah. <laughs> so she was yeah, from, in there from the beginning, yeah. They'd been um, out of the relationship. They, weren't, they hadn't been living together for about a year, but um, she was still very much in his life, and they would have dinner once a week, and I just used to freak me out. It, I just was so unsettling, and at one point, I just said, I can't, I just can't take it, you seeing her every week for dinner, you know, it's like, it's, it made it really hard for me to trust. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I said, I, you know, I just want to ask you to stop doing that, and to his, uh, I must say, I, he said, no, this person is, I don't want to be in relationship with him anymore. Been there, done that, that didn't work. But this is my friend. Mm -hmm. And I can't, like, not see a friend because you get nervous about that. And he was sad saying it, and I was sad hearing it. And we held each other and we just cried and it was hard. And, but I respected so much that he would stick to himself. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? His, his own, boundaries. Yep. His boundaries, that he had good boundaries. I knew he's, this is a man who takes care of himself. And as much as I didn't like his answer, I so respected him for it. And then magically, <laughs> she took off for Europe for two months. And we just sunk way in. Yeah. It, it just gave, I, I got to relax yeah. more and, and we mm -hmm. sunk in more. And when she got back, it just, they just didn't start that up. And if we did see her, we would see her as a couple. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because we also really like her. And we still see her as a couple. Fantastic. We, just, we visit her up on, you know. We just spent two weeks with her a in, couple of years in ago. Fort Townsend. <laughs> You yeah. Know, we house, we visit. We, yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. Close friends. Yeah. And so, 
I love that we brought up that like early on stuff because I'm curious, you know, what your attachment styles were when you first met, if you look back, and I'll just briefly go over it for the people listening. So there's anxious, which means you're more preoccupied with the relationships, and there's a fear of abandonment, and then secure, which means you feel more like there's more than enough love to go around. It's easy to be consistent, reliable, and loving. Um, and you feel that internal kind of security inside. And then avoidant, where relationships bring up a lot of um, feelings of kind of sometimes it feels like maybe you need space. And so maybe you like to be close, but then you need a lot of space. And then disorganized, which is the more traumatized when we have trauma in our childhood. And so um, we had the experience of our primary caregivers being a source of panic and fear and love. And so I believe we're all kind of a combination of all four, but we have kind of the top two that are the highest of those if we kind of took a test. So thinking back, like what did you, I kind of have a little idea in my head, but I'm curious what each of you uh, were in the beginning of your relationship um, when you first met, what the top two highest attachment styles were. Well, I, I, I knew that I wanted to be in a relationship. I knew that I wanted to have family. Beautiful. So uh, at that point, I wasn't about to have my own family either. When I found a family, I felt like I really started committing to this family. Yeah. Even though it was difficult with the kids. You know, I knew that internally, I knew that hanging out with them long enough, you know, they would break down and start enjoying my presence or, maybe, you know, maybe. Yeah, but, you had that internal confidence. Yeah. He's, he's very secure. Yeah, that's yeah. what it sounds like on all. Yeah, everything you just said is all secure. Yeah. I was more the anxious, insecure one. Mm -hmm. um, why that you know previous relationship would trigger me, and also all you know my partners had been alcoholic slash unavailable. Really, yeah. yeah. That going on, there's a part of them that is not. You can't trust them because they're basically busy harming themselves. Right. And you're attached to someone who's you know not trustworthy, and so that was my biggest thing was just learning how to trust. To then let so the love could come through. Yeah. Because that love just cannot come through if there isn't that trust. Oh. And so that took me the longest. Um, and really, literally, I would visualize like a, a window pane. That's what it felt like. It felt like I know I love this man. I trust him intellectually. How come I can't just, you know, cross that border? And it just took time. time. And Therapy and him solidly being there and continuing yeah. to say yes. Yeah. And, okay, you're nervous, but I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere. And, you know, yeah. I think you're both open to therapy in all different realms. Yeah. Maybe couple therapy yeah. and family therapy. Yeah. yeah, that openness is huge again. And I just want to say, you know, what you just said is so, so profound because that is something that when we have anxious attachment, there's that part of our brain that actually wants to prove that this person isn't trustworthy, that the, this person is going to go away. And so what you were talking about is that mindful attention and mindfulness that you used, you knew that that was you know, hard for you to trust him based on all your prior experiences of men. And so your cognitive brain knew he was trustworthy, but your unconscious brain needed to, you know, slowly develop this trust and this allowing to receive the love. And I love that point that you made, which is we can't actually receive love if we don't trust. It is, I just, I totally, yeah, resonate with that a lot. And I think um, trust is such a powerful, powerful part of relationship. And I can feel how much trust and love and respect there is 
with the two of you that exactly it's just this energy and also over time exactly you know over time the more that we see oh wow this person showing up this person showing up this person showing up okay yeah. i can settle yeah yeah there's a, a thing that you know as the decades have rolled on um and the only term that i have for it is just there's a deepening a deepening into the love and mm. It kind of reminds, reminds me of um, Michael Pollan when he tries to describe his LSD trips and, and he says it really is all about love. I mean, as you know, he says all those Hallmark cards, they sound so trite, you know, but when you're in the experience of it, it's the mo we need a new language for this. Yes. Yeah. We, you know, stages of love or different qualities of love because this, this older, you know, bonded love that's so filled with trust and respect. And I come back to the gratitude and the appreciation and the honesty and the, you know, attention to the minutia and just that you make like, and I don't mean this in a non-assertive, non-feminist way, but it's like my purpose is to serve Henry, like as as love, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Apps to support his growth, his development, to his personhood, you know, in any way possible with all the love available. Mm. You know, it's like that. Yeah. It's like that, where it yeah. is almost like, you know, a, it, well, like a spiritual practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and what and and what I love so much about secure functioning relationships is when you have that support, then it's like you know you guys said you guys both have thriving businesses. You know, you both have raised these amazing children. It's like so much can happen as a result of that anchor that you've created. Exactly, yeah. independent friendships, friendships together to cup, as a couple, but also, you know, separate friendships. Yeah. Yeah. All, all of that. Yeah. 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 That stable base is so, so powerful. Yeah. So um, let's do one last question and then I will let you on your way. It's been so much fun and such an honor to do this with you today. Um, so yeah, my one last question is, um, hmm. yeah, actually I'm curious for both of you, um, I don't know how much you're, um, have studied around masculine and feminine dynamics, but one thing that can happen in relationships is sometimes, um, or especially for women, is that we can really get in our masculine when we're at work or, you know, when we're taking care of kids, when we're constantly holding space for others. And, um, and you know, having that masculine-feminine polarity is so powerful. So I'm curious, Candice, if there's anything that you notice that you do in terms of practices or things you do on your own or for yourself or with your friends that you feel like really helps get you in your feminine, um, you know, amidst all the responsibilities of the work and the children and all the things that you have had to hold, especially. Right. So um, I think being able to um, express my creativity and a lot of that is just gardening Mm. It's, you know, stained glass, doing mosaic work, um, my time with my girlfriends, mm. the time in the ocean, you know, uh, hanging out with girlfriends and yeah. really talking girl talk. Um, I think all of that uh, is really vital to me and really important to me. Yeah. And, so that um, my creativity is more a kind of the lifestyle that I create for myself. Mm -hmm. and how I have fun with friends and family and, and with myself. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. It's like a source of nourishment outside of the relationship that nourishes yourself and your feminine. And that's always going to be feeding you. Yeah. I'm a Taurus. So that, you know, very earthy. So it's, you know, creating beautiful space, mm. you know, mm. you know uh, and singing. So joining a choir and singing, mm. singing with, you know, very various choirs in town. And so, you know, that's just that, I don't know, first the astrology part, you know, it's, yeah. it's clear. It's very much about the, that to Taurus energy. Yeah. Food, gardening and um, your, your environment and creating hope and beauty. Very yeah. cool. I love it. And Henry, yeah, I want to ask you similarly, how do you connect with your masculine? I don't know if it's conscious or unconscious. You might be doing things throughout the day that help you connect with it. Or, you know, is there anything specifically that you find that really helps you connect with your masculine that then you bring to the relationship, that energy? Um, I, I don't know. I can't really relate really to the terminology, but what came up for me was that uh, Really, feel feel like I've been blessed you know, doing work I love doing all my life, at least for the last forty years. Um, I really enjoyed each. I mean, I've had two different careers in the, uh, the, the vices and spices store, um, and also being a handyman. Mm. And that's that's really who I am. Yeah, is being a, and helping people and fixing things. Um, that's what I love to do. Yeah, and I also say, and his travel. I mean, this man is a traveler. Yeah, and that, that feeds that, the spirit. Yeah, absolutely. That momentum to go out in the world and you know connect with other cultures and other people and places, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's it's like the you know the Voyagers, the Vikings, or something. Yeah. You know? It's it's so deep in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally resonate with that, hundred uh percent. -huh. <laughs> Travels the best. Yeah, and I love that piece. Right, just like your work. You know, that is yeah. The masculine part of the masculine is purpose. So exactly, you've you've felt very aligned with your purpose. It sounds like, and you know, have constantly been feeding it and also being nourished by your purpose because you're enjoying it. Um, yeah which I is think very I, lucky not you know very very lucky yeah I find it's so interesting too that even on, for for both of us many many of our friends are self-employed that they're, they're not people that have kind of gone to into the corporate world uh some some but I'm just saying the major I would say the majority on both sides uh, uh you know are kind of self-made self self-motivating, self-energizing yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, and yeah. that become very obvious to me, you know, mm -hmm. now in stage of life. It's like, look, look who our friends are and, yeah. you know, what they did, what, what they're, they're doing. doing. Yeah. 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 Very right. cool. Well, it's just been such an honor and pleasure and joy to get to know you in this way and to interview you today. I so, so appreciate you taking the time. I, I deeply feel like this is going to be helpful for so many people, just like it's helpful for me, you know, growing up with, you know, divorced parents. I love hearing this, you know, we, I think we, we didn't figure out the math, but around 30 year marriage it's it's very profound and very beautiful and you know deeply nourishing to hear what that looks like and feels like to be in a marriage that 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 is that long it's really quite quite unique and quite impressive um so and i can just feel yeah how much respect each of you has for each other and love and care and appreciation and how much that of course just keeps growing and growing as you keep nourishing that bond thank you thank yeah. you it's been mm. it's, i'm so for you yeah really to be able to do this and it's been a dream of yours i think it's you know keep the ripple going <laughs> yeah thank you 
Thank you so much for listening to Rewire Your Attachment Style. This is Maya Diamond to receive your two free gifts to help you on your journey to lasting love and to start rewiring your attachment style today. Go to empowerlove.us forward slash love.